Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks very much for joining us tonight and taking time out of your evening to learn more about the county's efforts to fund projects to improve the health and safety of local neighborhoods. We really, really appreciate your being here. My name is Rochelle Lewis, and I'm a senior engagement consultant with Civic Mike. And I'm very happy to have Paulina Torrey here with us to provide Spanish translation. Paulina? Stand by. I think we're having a little bit of a uh, interpretation audio channel mix up here. Okay. Give me one second. Can you hear me there? There we are. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, Paulina, would you like me to repeat or were, were, you, were you able to get it? That's okay. I have my, my notes. <laughs> Great. Hola a todos, buenas noches, muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta noche, gracias por tomarse tu, su tiempo para aprender más sobre los esfuerzos que está haciendo el condado en financiar proyectos de mejoría en ámbitos de salud y seguridad en vecindarios locales y también para resolver sus dudas, realmente apreciamos que estén aquí esta noche. Mi nombre es Rochelle Luis, yo soy una consultante con Civic Mike y estamos felices de tener aquí a Paulina Torri que nos va a ayudar con la interpretación al español. Thank you. Uh, if you would like to listen in English only, just stay where you are. If you would like to access the Spanish audio and hear the Spanish translation of all the presentations as they happen, you can click on the little round icon at the bottom of your screen that's titled Interpretation, and then you can click to choose Spanish. So if you would like to hear the Spanish audio, Go ahead and do that now, and I'll let Paulina provide those instructions in Spanish. Si quieren escuchar la presentación en inglés, quédense donde están, no mueven, no muevan nada. Sin embargo, si quieren escuchar esto, la interpretación en español, al fondo de su pantalla va a haber un círculo que dice interpretación. Hagan clic en ese botón para que se muevan al canal de español y puedan escuchar la presentación de manera simultánea en español conforme vayamos hablando. Y vamos a dar un momento para que aquellos que quieran escuchar el canal en español se muevan al canal de español. Great. Uh, we give, does everybody, does, if anybody doesn't see that icon on their screen, you can send a, a note in the chat or... and uh, our moderator will receive it. Are folks seeing that icon at the bottom of their screen like I am? Yes, I'm seeing heads nodding. That's good. Okay, so we'll give people a moment to head there. And Paulina, do you, are you all set up? Okay, all right. So just a little bit about uh, Civic Mike before uh, we introduce pre presenters. We've been working with the county uh, as well as Debrief, which, uh, doing community outreach over the past year to help inform and engage residents about their priorities for improving their communities. And tonight, the county's main focus is to provide an understanding of the resulting infrastructure improvement projects that are planned for your community and to provide an opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, with us here, our County Board of Supervisors representative for District 1, Buck Condit, and for District 2, Vito Chiesa, to open up the meeting and share some important information with us about their work. But just quickly, I uh, want to just give a couple of ground rules before we jump in. Uh, we plan to keep the meeting to one hour, including 15 to 20 minutes for questions. We are going to hold all questions to the end of the presentations. So if you have a question, make a note of it. And we hope to answer a lot of your questions just in the course of the presentations. To help keep background noise down, we ask that you please keep yourself muted when you're not speaking so everyone can hear what's being presented. If someone goes off mute who is not speaking, we'll put them back on so everyone can hear the information being shared. 
Civic Mike's work is engaging the public and we're interested in helping the county hear from all residents. And we're committed to ensuring respectful dialogue. So of course, foul language or personal insults are not acceptable. And we've never had to do this before, but in the event there is bad behavior, that person will be moved by the moderator into a private meeting on Zoom to regain their composure and allowed to return. And if the behavior continues, that person will be permanently removed from the meeting. Of course, this looks like a very friendly group and we do not expect this to happen, but we say it at the top of every meeting so everyone can be assured that this is a respect a respective form. And with that, I'd like to welcome Supervisor um, Buck Condit. I'm sorry, we're gonna go first with uh, Supervisor Vito Chiesa to talk about some of the important work that the county has been doing that has taken us to this point. Thank you very much, Rochelle. And I'm gonna try and speak slowly so that we can do the translation and because I'm not normally a slow talker. But I, I wanna thank you, first of all, for joining this virtual meeting. So from the county's perspective, when we went through COVID, the federal government came up with uh, uh, some funding to help us through. Uh, this is called the American Recovery Act plan and the county received $109 million. And we took about 50% of that to try and deal with some of these legacy issues, as I would call them. Uh, we have about 43 county islands, I believe it's in the 40s. Uh, mostly in the Modesto, Turlock, and Ceres area. This is considered once in a generation money. The county also put in 15 million additional dollars to that, and we were able to leverage another 5 million from the state of California. So with these projects here happen to be in District 2 and District 1. My project is the Kenwood Island, again, right in the middle of Turlock trying to bring these islands up to standard so that they can be annexed into the city where we believe there can be better services provided. And we are extremely excited. I know that nothing happens fast enough, but we're so excited that we have a chance to uh, move forward with this important, uh, really these underserved areas for many, many years. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to supervisor from district one, Mr. Buck Condit. Thank you, Vito. Um, I think you covered quite a bit uh, of how we got uh, the monies, and I'm just happy to see we're getting to a point of progress in improving infrastructure and the quality of life in these areas. Uh, using American Rescue Plan Act and the building community infrastructure monies, making improvements in our county islands has been a priority for this board, and a lot more needs to be done. Um, we're getting there. Like you said, the process is, is slow, uh, but we wanna make sure that we're doing it right. And we did hold a lot of meetings um, throughout when we came up with these projects. Um, then Chairman Terry Withrow um, made the idea or had the idea of going around to all these different communities uh, within the five districts and coming up uh, with these projects. And, and as a board, we decided together what needed to be done and it gave us a better idea of all the other districts also. Yep. We're using 55 million to fix these projects and it's just a drop in the bucket. It, it would take close to, I think Vito, correct me if I'm wrong, 800 million to fix all of the other areas uh, within the county. Uh, so this is just a drop in the bucket, but I think we're getting the biggest bang for our bucks right now. And, you know, a lot of all of these projects, or at least most of them, are in the unincorporated areas of the county. So I can't wait to see the progress being made and the improvements and, and the improvement of quality of life in Stanislaus County. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Condit and Supervisor Chiesa. Uh, it was great to hear uh, your passion about the work that um, the county is committed to for these urban pockets and um, just wanted to give a quick overview of the agenda. We're going to hear from three sets of presenters. One, uh, we'll hear from uh, County uh, Public Works Engineer Danny Mauricio, who will give us some, a little bit of additional background on where we are. Uh, we will hear from the engineering firm that is designing these projects. 
uh, about the timing, the locations, and the description of the work. And we'll also hear uh, from NBS financial advisors about the research being conducted about the West, best way to finance the maintenance of these projects once they are um, once they are complete. And then we will take your questions. Uh, the meeting is being recorded and shared will be shared on our website civicmike.com um, forward slash Stanislaus. If you haven't visited that site, it's C I V I C M I C dot com forward slash Stanislaus. And that's where you can find all the information shared with the community to date, sign up for updates so you can continue to um, learn more about next steps as we move forward. Uh, all of the slides being presented tonight will also be posted on that website. So feel free to visit and share with your neighbors and spread the word. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Danny Mauricio with the Stanislaus County Department of Public Works. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Danny Mauricio and I am with uh, Public Works. So a little bit of background information. Over the last several years, Stanislaus County has been working to address infrastructure needs within unincorporated developed neighborhoods such as yours. The Board of Supervisors have taken several actions to guide infrastructure improvements such as prioritizing public health and safety. This looks like the installation of sewer main lines and potable water systems. Next slide. In 2021, the Board of Supervisors approved various strategic priorities for the use of 90 million of the 107 million in American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, also known as ARPA funding. Of the 90 million, 50 million was assigned to community infrastructure. Next slide. In 2022, a public outreach strategy was approved to gather feedback from the community as to how the 50 million should be spent, should be invested throughout the county. In this outreach effort, the public was also educated on criteria utilized in the NRS reports. For example, cost of improvements, public benefit, benefits to disadvantaged communities, regional equity, community support for maintenance. Next slide. In September of 2022, the board, the board accepted the final recommendations on infrastructure projects to be funded. The 50 million was invested equitably throughout the five districts where staff work with each supervisor to identify the specific projects. For this meeting, we are looking at District 1, Topeka Santa Fe, and District 2, Kenwood Star. Additionally, earlier this year, uh, of the remaining 17 million that had yet to be assigned, an additional 5.8 million has been assigned to community infrastructure. This will bring the total to 55.8 million that has been assigned to the community infrastructure. Staff has not allocated the additional amount to a specific district or project, but will at a later date. So as you can see on the screen, um, you may find that current ARPA allocations may not co uh, cover the full cost of improvements, but there are, as mentioned by the supervisors, there are additional funds out there that we are working with in hopes to cover the need. And with that, we will go on to our engineers. Great, thank you, Danny. Paul Klein and Katie Wrightson with Wood Rogers. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Wrightson and I'm with Wood Rogers, the engineering firm working on the design. And Paul Klein is here as well. Um, I'm gonna cover our slides for today. So this first slide here is showing area 31, which is the Kenwood Star neighborhood, and you might recognize it as your own. So this is a portion of the project in Turlock that we're working on enhancing pedestrian safety and public health, and we are improving storm drain facilities to relieve localized flooding. Next slide. This is our project in the city of Riverbank, and we are doing the same thing. We're enhancing pedestrian safety and public health and improving uh, drainage in the area. Next slide. 
So in both of these areas, we're doing very similar improvements, and those include additional curb ramps at intersections and sidewalk for um, improved pedestrian mobility. We're widening the roadways. We are installing curb and gutter to improve drainage patterns. We are adding street lighting and water services and meters. We're adding a few fire hydrants where they're needed and some sewer services. Next slide. So there are a lot of items to be careful of while we're working on our design. Um, some of our, some of the items we're paying special attention to is maintaining your driveway access. So we'll be using a rolled curb or a drive over curb um, for ease of maintaining that access for you. And we'll be preserving existing fences, walls, and decorative features as much as possible. Um, and we're going to be minimizing impacts to existing trees and landscaping and private property. Next slide. So these two photos show the contrast between what exists out there today and what we hope to have at the end of the day with our project. So on the left, you might recognize this intersection. Um, this is at Kenwood and Star. And you see that we just have the edge of pavement with no curb on the side of the street closest to us. And then you can see off in the distance um, we have the same situation with curb on the other side. So we're trying to bring this area up to city standard, which you see in the right photo where we have a widened street section, sidewalk and curbs on both sides um, and some drainage improvements. Next slide. So this is our schedule. By the end of this month, we'll be through the environmental process. And then by June, 2024, we will be through the design phase and start the bidding process and award a contractor with the work by December 2024. And then two years later, construction is anticipated to be complete. And those are all of our slides, thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks very much, Katie. Uh, if I could just pause for a moment because we had a number of people, uh, I think, jump on. Uh, just in the last few moments. And Danny, I wonder if you would mind if I could ask you to just, uh, in Spanish, let anybody know if they want to move into the Spanish audio room, how to do so. Hola, buenas tardes. Para todos que han llegado un poquito de tarde, este, si gustaría escuchar la presentación en español, este, en el fondo, a uh, mero abajo, a ver que hay un botón que dice interpretación. Si lo selecta, este le cambiaría el canal este donde está la interpretadora a este Paulina que este escucharía toda la presentación en la voz de ella. Gracias. Thanks very much. Okay, we're going to move on to our uh, our last uh, presenter, Sarah Mars. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah uh, is is with us, but she's uh, she's listening in a little under the weather, but Sonia Ortega with NVS Financial Services um, to take it over the last portion of our slides. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sonia Ortega and I'm with um, NBS. Um, my colleague Sarah and I have been working with the county um, over the last few months to develop essentially funding mechanism um, that will help the improvements that are being proposed. So as discussed, the ARPA funds will build the improvements, um, but funds will be needed long term to maintain them. Um, so we are, again, working closely to develop cost estimates. Once we determine this cost, um, we look at all available funding options and calculate a rate that's specific to your parcel and your type of property. Um, all property owners will have an opportunity to cast a ballot on the charge for the maintenance cost um, and ongoing communication as well as you know, future community meetings where we walk you through this process in more detail um, are the next steps really with, with our um, involvement here in this project. Um, any conversation or any updates and improvements 
that are being done at the time. Um, also, you know, our, although the city is not currently in an annexation process with this, uh, the improvements bringing them up to city standards, um, they do qualify then to obviously go through an annexation process. And as updates of that um, move forward, we would also come back to you as a community and present those changes to you. Um, any potential increases to the funds for this, um, again, you would have the opportunity to vote and you would most likely see that um, on an annual basis on your annual property tax bill or via monthly installments that, if that's something that you currently pay out in monthly uh, payments now. Thank you, Sonia. Okay, we are ready to move on to your questions. Uh, we'll go back and forth between those who are online here on Zoom and those who called in. If you have been listening to the Spanish audio, we will be moving to consecutive translation for this last portion of the meeting. So everyone will hear the Q&A in both languages. So hopefully we are all together now. Uh, and Paulina. I can hear you. Great. Uh, OK. If you have a question, you can put your hand up by clicking on the little icon uh, reactions at the bottom of the screen. Hagan clic en el icono de reacciones que está abajo en la pantalla. And, uh, and raise your hand. Y levanten su mano. And I'm looking for hands now to see if we have any questions. Estoy buscando manos, a ver si tenemos preguntas. Not seeing any there. Uh, if you are on the phone and you have a question. No veo ninguna. Si están en el teléfono y tienen alguna pregunta. Uh, then you can unmute yourself and uh, say your name. Pueden abrir su micrófono y dar su nombre. And I am not hearing or seeing any questions. No veo ni escucho ninguna pregunta. So I will ask if uh, any of our presenters have anything else to add before we close out, while we give po folks some, another moment Entonces, to think of questions. Les voy a dar eh, lo que eh, piensan si tienen alguna duda o pregunta. Le voy a preguntar a los presentadores si hay alguna pregunta o aclaración que quieran hacer. I have a question. Yo tengo sure. Can you state your name, please? Yes, Patricia Jones. Hi, Patricia. Welcome. Soy Patricia. Thank Vivian. you. What is your question? My, my question is, I live on Denaire. And I think where you have done work on Downstar, uh, you know, uh, not Star, Wayside, where you've been re I guess doing the sewage or whatever, where you've been putting pipes in and you've redone the street. Are you going to continue through between uh, uh, Wayside, which is Stars, the next one, and then Canal? Are you going to work on, will you be putting that into the roads? Denaire, I'm on the side where uh, I'm on one side of TID. Uh, will you be putting in drainage and the the road repair like you did on Wayside, will that all be, will we be included in that or are you just doing main drag, the main uh, roads? Because we have horrible roads here. And okay. all of a sudden there's been a, a lot of work done on Wayside all the way down to Olive from Gear to Olive. And uh, We've got, and Canal has been, you know, Canal is in good shape, but the uh, Kenwood, uh, Denaire, 
Mitchell, all of these roads through here from Wayside to Hawkeye, there's nothing been done. The holes and, and the drainage and everything has not been anything done. Will, will you guys get to us or you or how is that going to, how, how is that going to work? Um, so to summarize, so Paulina can translate. Uh, okay, go ahead. Because I'm not I, very good at that. No, that's okay. And this is, it's a good reminder to uh, anybody else who wishes to raise a question. We are now uh, trying to translate English to Spanish, Spanish to English. So if your question's in English or Spanish, if you could speak uh, slowly and then take a, a break, um, if your question is on the lengthier side, so that our translator has an opportunity to translate okay. that. Uh, so I just really didn't know how to ask the question. <laughs> I think the question, <laughs> what, my understanding of the question was beyond what we saw on the map that was presented by the engineering firm, are there going to be uh, other streets, uh, Daener, like with improvements like Daener has had? Is that correct? Right. No, Daener has not had any improvements. We we only will, improvements. Yeah. Will Daener be included? Yeah, we're, per we're, we're perpendicular to uh, Star and right. Side. So I think it turned the uh, question over sorry, to Paulina have, to translate. Mi pregunta básicamente fue si los trabajos de mejoría van a llegar eh, hasta mi, mis calles. Eh, no, no estuvieron presentadas en, en las diapositivas. Entonces la pregunta es si en mi calle también se van a hacer estos eh, mejorías. And uh, I think Danny looks like he's re wanting to answer this question unless you'd like me to turn it over to Katie. Uh, I could have, I can, I, I could answer it. Okay. Um, the improvements will take place between Canal and Wayside, yes, Olive, yes. and Mitchell. Las so, mejorías se van a llevar a cabo entre Canal, Wayside, Olive, y Mitchell. Uh, but Denair Avenue is not within uh, the map area within the county. Uh, Denair Avenue, I believe, is in the city of Turlock. Pero no, la avenida de Denair no está, eh, no está en el mapa, no está incluido. And the improvements that were taken place on Wayside were from the city of Turlock. Y las mejorías que oh, se llevaron okay. a cabo en Wayside fueron por parte de la ciudad de Turín. Because Thank Denair you. is considered in the county. The only time we're ever not considered on the county island is for uh, whole, uh, for insurance purposes. Otherwise, we we cannot call the police. Uh, the police we have to call the sheriff because we're considered county. We're right next to TID. We're I... we crawl, you know. So we're not. So we're going to be totally left out of this. Is what you're saying. I I, I misspoke. So let, me, let me make a clarification. Okay. I don't have, so, I'm not seeing it because I'm on the phone and that's why yeah. I'm not understanding. I apologize. So there is a strip of Denair between Star and Canal that is within the county. Is that the area you're talking about? Yes. Yes, that area uh, is within the limits of Kenwood Star. Okay. But what the improvements that have been made, even though they were made by the city, they have been tremendous. They really have been tremendous. So anything that uh, can be done, I think you guys are doing a wonderful job. Hey. I was just asking if we were going to be included. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Gracias por su pregunta. Hubo una aclaración. Ella no, ella no tenía claro eh, si esta calle era eh, parte del condado o no, pero ya se aclaró eh, que las calles a las que ella se refería sí son parte del condado, sí iban a tener mejorías y ella agradece por las mejorías y el progreso que están haciendo. Eh, han sido maravillosos y se agradecen. And I see, I see Donna Bush patiently waiting with her hand up. Go ahead, Donna. Hi. Did you have a Hi, question? Think, yeah, I did. Um, I was wondering where I could go to get information that would 
be specific to the property that I own in Riverbank on what the planned improvements are. I know you had talked about sidewalks and curbs and gutter. How do I know that my property would be included in that? Or where could I go to find that out specifically? Mi duda es sobre dónde puedo buscar información específica a la propiedad eh, que yo tengo en, en Riverbank y quisiera saber si estas mejorías incluyen mi propiedad y cuáles son las mejorías que incluyen mi propiedad. So, uh, we are going to have uh, additional uh, community outreach as the design for these projects get finalized uh, and there will be an opportunity for the community to learn that information um, that you just asked about, Donna, as well as to provide input. Okay, thank you. Vamos a tener juntas adicionales eh, sobre los proyectos de diseño una vez que hayan sido finalizados, en donde tendremos la oportunidad de que la comunidad eh, sepa más sobre esta información que acabas de preguntar y también vamos a recibir su retroalimentación. Thank you. Gracias. I'm Searching to see if I see any additional hands up or if anybody else is on the phone. Uh, yeah, Who I see a uh, we have uh, Robert Davis is raising their hand in uh, on their camera. So I believe they would like to. Thanks, John. A question. Robert, are you with uh, us? Robert. Do you have a question? Yes, actually, I'm Robert Angel. I don't know where he got Davis at. Uh, Kenwood Star. Uh, There's actually there another any... Robert Davis that's attempting to ask a question right now. Uh, he just <laughs> is still muted, but we can definitely come back to the other Robert in just a second. But Robert Davis, if you uh, you will need to unmute yourself, I think uh, you should be able there to. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, I live, I live at 3956 Santa Fe. And my biggest concern is. I work for the city of Oakdale in public works in the water department. Uh, you're going to put new sewer lines in, is my understanding. Eh, yo vivo en la calle Santa Fe y mi preocupación más grande, porque yo trabajo en trabajos públicos, y mi preocupación más grande, hasta donde tengo entendido, es que van a instalar nuevo sistema de alcantarillado. Katie, can I ask you to address that question? Yes, um, on Santa Fe, we are adding sewer services, but the um, sewer main is not currently planned to be replaced. Okay, the reason I'm asking you about that because most of the people here is on septic tank. Will we be required to hook up to the city? En la calle Santa Fe, hasta donde tengo entendido, vamos a añadir servicios de alcantillado, pero no al principal. El motivo por el cual pregunto esto es porque la mayoría de las personas eh, tienen tanques sépticos y pregunto si vamos a tener que ser, va a haber un requerimiento de que nos unamos eh, al nuevo sistema. So, is that a question, Katie, that you or Danny would care to take? Yeah, I can answer. Thank you. Um, no, you will not be required to connect to, um, when we install those sewer services, you don't necessarily need to connect. So you can stay on septic uh, or you can connect. So you'll, you'll have options now. Okay. And approximately how wide will the road be? Eh, no, no serán requeridos de conectarse a estos servicios. Tienen la opción de quedarse con sus tanques sépticos o eh, conectarse a los nuevos sistemas. Mi otra pregunta es, ¿qué tan ancho van a ser los caminos ahora? Current design, the road is approximately 30 feet wide from the lip of the gutter to the lip of the gutter on either side. So about 15 foot wide travel lanes for vehicles. Okay, thank you. That's all. Yeah. Actualmente, aproximadamente miden 30 pies de ancho, de banqueta a banqueta. 
y se estima que haya 15 pies para que circulen los vehículos. Thank you. Uh, Chris, Brady, I see your hand up, um, but I'm wondering, did Robert Angel have a question? Uh, I know we, we had you, we called on you earlier and I wasn't sure if you had a question or not. Yes, I'm Robert. Um, I didn't notice, is, is there any uh, plans for the alleys in our area, Kenwood Star? In particular. Eh, no sé si va, hay planes para nuestros callejones en nuestra área en que gustar. I can so answer. We are looking. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just going to. So I want to clarify the first uh, re response about the sewer line, and that is. We will not force people to connect to the new sewer laterals. However, if your, your septic system fails in the future, the building department will not be permitting a brand new septic system. At that point in time is when we would request that you, some, you connect to the new sewer system. Quiero aclarar algo eh, sobre la primera pregunta, sobre eh, la nueva línea de alcantarillado. No los vamos a obligar a que se conecten al nuevo. Sin embargo, para cuando esté listo todo esto, si su sistema séptico falla, ya no permitiremos eh, nuevos sistemas, que nuevos sistemas se conecten. And then um, for the alleys, um, the answer is no. The improvements would be strictly related to what's in the public right away, the streets, curb gutters and sidewalks and lighting. So no alley improvements. Y en cuanto a los callejones, no, las mejorías no están planeadas eh, para los callejones. Nos estamos enfocando estrictamente en caminos públicos, eh, banquetas, calles, alumbrado, eh, alcantar alcantarillas. Entonces no, no callejones. Thank you. Uh, anybody else on the phone have any questions? If so, you can uh, unmute yourself and state your name, please. Alguien más por teléfono que tenga alguna duda o pregunta, se puede, puede abrir su micrófono y hacer su pregunta y decir su nombre. Not seeing any additional hands raised. No veo más manos adicionales levantadas. Uh, if folks, um, John, perhaps you could go to the, the last slide. Or maybe the slide right before. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, if folks think of questions that you have, uh, Please feel free to reach out to us at Civic Mike and we will get your questions answered. Si se les ocurre alguna pregunta, por favor contáctenos en Civic Mike y con gusto eh, responderemos sus preguntas. And this form that you see, if for those of you who can see the screen, there is a form uh, that you can fill out so that you can be subscribed to our email list so that we can share information with you on next steps, on the next meeting, uh, and, and any updates. And the website, once again, for those of you who aren't seeing the screen, is www.civicmike.com slash Stanislav. Y bueno, eh, para los que pueden ver la pantalla, aquí hay un formato en el que se pueden suscribir para actualizaciones y noticias sobre nosotros, para que también eh, los incluamos en nuestra lista de, de correos en donde compartiremos información sobre los siguientes pasos, nuestras siguientes citas, siguientes reuniones, actualizaciones. Y les recuerdo, nuestra página es eh, www.civicmike.com. Eh, barra diagonal eh, Stanislao. And unless any of our 
presenters have anything else to add for the good of the order, it looks like we can be wrapped up. Y a menos que alguien joining. de nuestros presentadores tenga otro comentario, creo que podemos terminar. Gracias por eh, unirse esta noche. I want to thank everyone. Oh, I see Chris raising his hand. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, you're waving goodbye. Okay. I think on behalf of all of our presenters, I want to, uh, again, thank everybody for uh, taking time out of your evening to uh, become informed. You can also see on the screen our uh, phone number and email address, even if, or if you want to send a letter, there's a, a, a address, all of these slides, again, will be on the website and the recording of the meeting itself will also be on the website for those of you who may have come in uh, once we got started. Y bueno, eh, de parte de todos los presentadores, les doy las gracias por haberse tomado el tiempo esta tarde de unirse con nosotros sobre aprender lo que estamos haciendo. Eh, y les recuerdo, por favor, que se suscriban, compartan la palabra para que podamos mandarles actualizaciones. Eh, también, si quieren recibir correo, eh, tenemos nuestra dirección de correo para poder eh, mantenerlos al tanto. Thanks very much, and thanks again to Pauline, our translator. My pleasure. Gracias a todos y gracias a Paulina, el intérprete. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank gracias you. Gracias a bye todos. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye.